Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and yes, I'm still recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's always great to have some of our readers further analyze some malware that was discussed in our diaries. Now, we got a post here by Vinny that Didier put up, and it looked in more detail at the encrypted K-Pod malware that was discussed by Didier in a prior post. Now, what Vinny here did in order to decrypt this K-Pod malware is, well, just run it and essentially let it decrypt itself and then dump memory in order to get a snapshot of the decrypted code. And this worked pretty nicely here. He was able then to essentially just use simple strings to learn more about the malware. So if you're interested, take a look at what he did here in order to accomplish this. Now, first of all, he used just simple task manager in order to get a process dump for this dllhost.exe binary. And then he just used foremost to extract the actual executables. Once extracted, he had it all decrypted and could use simple strings in order to sort of learn a little bit more about this particular malware. So pretty neat and quick technique. Also nice that in addition to task manager, the only thing he needed was foremost, which of course is sort of a stable, a well-known forensics tool to extract data from binary dumps like memory or disk dumps. And if you are running VMware's vCenter server, it's time to update. VMware released a patch on Friday that addresses an information disclosure vulnerability with a CVSS score of a full 10. So this can lead to a complete system compromise. Now, these sensitive information disclosure vulnerabilities are always a little bit tricky to gauge, but apparently here the problem is VM there and uh, it doesn't implement uh, correct access control. So it's possible to gain access to data that you're not supposed to have access to, which apparently may include credentials and such, which then in turn, of course, can be used to compromise the system. However, in order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker needs to have network access to the VM and their deployment. In recent years, there's sort of two cryptocurrencies that kind of stand out when it comes to malicious software. First of all, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, of course, being the most well-known cryptocurrency, it's usually used by ransomware, in part, I believe, because the difficulties in obtaining Bitcoin are probably lower than for most other cryptocurrencies. And of course, the ransomware actor has to convince the victim to actually pay them. The second cryptocurrency, Monero, I see mostly used with crypto coin miners that are installed uh, by malware. And of course, in this case, well, uh, the bad guy is installing the miner. They know what currency they want. So Monero is nice because it provides more anonymity. Now, it looks like this is changing a little bit. The Sodino Kibi uh, ransomware apparently has switched to Monero now. Monero, of course, being more privacy focused, makes it impossible uh, to trace where the cryptocurrency is actually going. With Bitcoin, of course, uh, that's a lot easier. And Bleeping Computer received the reports that uh, Wiper, basically software that destroys systems by overriding the master boot record, is impersonating well-known security researchers. The way this malware works is that it overrides the boot record and then displays a message, essentially stating that uh, the particular system was compromised either by Vitaly Kremitz or Malware Hunter team or Sentinel One Labs ransomware. All of these are organizations, individuals 
who are heavily involved in, of course, finding, reversing malware. And it's not unheard of, of course, that you have some retaliation attacks like this that implicate these researchers. Of course, nobody would really believe necessarily that they these people did it, at least not in the industry, but can be painful enough in particular since they did include phone numbers, email addresses, Twitter handles and such, where victims will now bombard these people with requests uh, to undo the damage. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.